SQL Server has a myriad of functions to easily manipulate dates and times. Why doesn't Oracle have them? And I thought I'd leap straight into a demo to show you how to admit some of the cool things that SQL Server has, which I suppose have evolved from the days of these facilities existing in Visual Basic and Excel and, and the various Office style languages. I think SQL Server simply picked them up along for the ride. But let's go with another demo. So I had a look, I went Googling for the SQL Server manual and there's a stack of date and time functions, but the, mo the most common ones and the ones that seemed to stand out were the fact that you can simply Rather than having to do two char and two number, you can just do a day, day function to get the day out of a date. You can do a month, the year, where you can construct a date using parts. So if I got the year, month, and day, I can construct a day. In Oracle, we'd have to sort of you know do some concatenation. And they have a date diff. If I've got two dates, I can nominate. Uh, I want the difference in years, the difference in months, et cetera, et cetera. So the question is, can we actually exploit these you know, in Oracle? Yes, SQL Server has them natively but it's trivial for us to build them in Oracle. So let's do them first, and then we'll explore how we can make them even more performant. It's very easy to write these functions and use them yourself in Oracle. For a day, we simply two number on two char the day. For a month, same thing on month, and for a year, two number two char on the year. And we can test these out. Yes, it's the 22nd of February, and it's 2024. At which point you're going, whoa, hold on a second. Context switching, context switching, peel SQL to SQL context switching. We can't have that, right? Well, a couple of things you might want to explore. Number one is, well, where was it? 12.2, maybe 12.2, maybe later. We introduced a pragma called UDF, user defined functions. And that pragma was, if you have a user defined peel SQL function, that its predominant use will be from the SQL engine. Let us know that via a pragma, and then what will happen is we can optimize the calling interface between the two engines. So to give you a simple example of that, here's a very trivial number, a function called F1 UDF. It simply takes a number and returns that number plus one. But I've got that pragma in there saying, this is a function I'll use almost exclusively from the SQL engine. And I'll create the conventional version of the same function without the pragma. And let's see if actually this claim that we make here at Oracle that UDF functions will run better from SQL engine is actually true. I'm gonna run it a million times. So you can see here I've got a thousand rows from dual times a thousand from dual. Cartesian product makes a million rows and I'm calling this function a million times, just choosing the max because that way I don't get lots of rows. And it took 0.88 seconds. If I call the UDF equivalent, it's about four times faster. See, we weren't lying to you. This is true. Pragma UDF functions can be much more performant when they're called from the SQL engine. This is extreme because I'm calling it a million times, but this is often where these scenarios come in when you're scanning huge amounts of rows and applying this function to every single row. Armed with this information, let's now recreate those three functions, the day function with a UDF, month function with the UDF, year function with the UDF. So that's good. Now we can test these as well to see the performance benefit. Because I've replaced these three functions now with Pragma UDF, I'll create a year non-UDF, which doesn't have the pragma, so we can compare the performance between the two. I'll run once again a million versions of the year function with the non-UDF, and you can see it takes just about two seconds. Let's now see the benefit of having our UDF in there. And we can see that we don't really get any difference. Yes, UDF is a really cool pragma, but there's obviously some scenarios in which we don't get those perceived benefits of having the pragma in there. I was playing around with this a little bit earlier today, and it seemed to be the case that uh, the sysdate, the passing of sysdate, seemed to sort of defeat any benefits of the UDF. We're sort of back to where we were before, a little bit stuck in terms of these functions, even with UDFs, are not giving the benefits that we would expect. So we got that SQL to peel SQL context switching problem again. So if we can't use UDF, is there a better option? And yes, from 21C onwards, and I would imagine most of us when we get to it'll be 23C, SQL macros in scalar form. These are huge. I think these the, the scope for these is going to be incredible. So let's recreate our day function, but now using a SQL macro. And what I've got here is that we're returning now no longer a number, we're returning a string because a SQL macro scalar is simply grabbing a piece of text that will be literally injected, that's a terrible use of the term, into your SQL statement. So it's a SQL macro of scalar form, so it's gonna be used as an expression. And we can see I'm returning the string to number to char dd. Same thing for month, same thing for year. I'm now gonna grab that piece of text 
and put it into my SQL when I call it. So now I can actually call the day function and it does the same results, day, month, year, etc. I actually no longer have a Peel SQL interpreted program. It's actually a piece of text that at parsing time is put into my SQL statement. And we can see that this thing is now enormously quicker than calling the Peel SQL equivalent. It's now down to 0.3 seconds, previously about two seconds at best. And that's for a million executions. Because we're no longer actually even referring to Peel SQL. We're simply grabbing that text and putting it into the SQL engine itself. SQL macros scale level opens up enormous opportunities. Let's now construct the other facilities that are in SQL Server. Once again, very easy to do with SQL macros. Date from parts. If you pass in me a year, a month, and a day, all I do is effectively fill out the year to four digits, fill out the month to two digits, and the day to two digits, and put a two date around it. Date from parts, 2023-01-17 gives me 17th of January, 2023. Similarly, the date diff one. Date diff is actually quite an impressive function in SQL Server. You give me two dates, and you ask for the difference between them, but you can choose the units. So in this case, I've got effectively, if they want the difference in years, then I'll return the year between these two things. This is another cool thing in SQL macros. This SQL macro called date diff is going to use other SQL macros that are previously defined. They can call each other, and it's just simply going to nest repeatedly those facilities. Date diff in years between sysdate and sysdate plus 500 is one year. Date diff in months is 16.48 months. I could choose to floor that or seal it if I wanted to. Date diff in hours, minutes, and seconds. Once again, just passing these parameters. All of these things are simply constructing text that will ultimately go directly into my SQL execution stream. And finally, uh, this is one I had on my blog that I sort of include here because this is a really common requirement we have for the new timestamp data types, which is people say, show me the difference between two timestamps in terms of total number of seconds. Because in dates, it's trivial. You take away two dates from each other and you get a numeric times about 86,400 and the job is done. Unfortunately, for timestamps, you get interval data types. And taking an interval and converting it to seconds requires several extract functions. The cool thing with a SQL macro scaler is you can just put that into a SQL macro, and now you have this native function called elapsed time, and the job is done. There you go, elapsed time between this timestamp and 123 minutes from now is 7,380 seconds. As database 23C comes out, because I assume most of us are not on 21C, SQL macros of Scalar is going to let you port just about any function that's available in other databases into the Oracle database simply with a piece of text. And it makes your data migration and code migration things that much easier. Because if I've got code written in SQL Server, like things like T-SQL, or I've got things written in Postgres, then a lot of those functions can simply have a SQL macro equivalent and you don't have to do a great deal of code migration. So some really cool stuff coming in 21C onwards with SQL Macro Scalers.